It's Kate from Katie Did. Welcome back to Rock Talk. Today we're going to talk about petrified wood. It's petrified wood that has been filled with jasper. Found a big chunk of petrified wood. Some whites and some pinks, all kinds of colors. Really nice. I've, I've heard rock hounds call it pet wood and this cracks me up because uh, way back in the 1970s there were these things called pet rocks and everybody was all excited about pet rocks and I thought man we could have pet wood and we could like make little clothes for it and put little eyes on it. Anyway this has nothing to do with petrified wood. Sorry I digress. So what is petrified wood? Well it isn't really wood at least not anymore. It's a fossil that started out as wood and then was slowly replaced by minerals. Depending on the type of tree and the types of minerals that replaced it, petrified wood comes in a rainbow of colors. Uh, it's black and red and yellow and it can be filled with lots of other minerals too like uh, pyrite and opal and agate. It's a pretty cool stone. It can be found in chunks as tiny as your fingernail or as huge as an entire log and that is so so cool. Some uh, logs have been discovered intact with rings, knots, and bark. How was petrified wood formed? Well to understand how it was formed we have to go back in time. Way, way, way back in time. Petrified wood fossils can vary in age from 15 million years ago, which was in like Oregon and Washington, to 280 million years ago, which is in Brazil, um, even 385 million years, which is the Gilboa Forest in the Catskill Mountains of New York. Those are the oldest fossilized forests that have been found to date. The fossilized trees are placed in time using a variety of techniques. The most common one is relative dating, which uses the age of the sedimentary rocks around the fossil to figure out when it was put there. Um, another technique for aging fossils is called biostratigraphy. This one is comparing the age of petrified wood to other known fossils in the layer. This would be like if you bought eggs and milk at the same time, taking a look at the sell by date on the milk to figure out how long ago you put the eggs in there. Finally, there is a technique called radiometric dating. You might have heard of radiocarbon dating, which is used on historical items to kind of figure out how old they are. Uh, but unfortunately, carbon only has a half-life of 60,000 years. So for dating rocks that are millions of years old, it's really not that useful. Um, however, there are other elements that can be used to date rocks. So to age rocks, Geologists use uranium thorium, rubidium strontium, and potassium argon, looking at my cheat sheet, which have half-lives of millions or even billions of years, regardless of the actual age of the specimen. Transforming a tree into a petrified fossil requires a certain set of conditions to be met. First, the tree must be covered suddenly by either mud or ash, silt, um, and this creates, this, this covering of the tree creates what's called an anaerobic environment. Anaerobic literally means without air. And because there isn't any air, the, the tree can't rot. It's just stuck in that mud. Stuck in the mud. Okay, so it's locked in there. <laughs> Next, mineral-rich waters start to seep into the plant cells, one molecule at a time being replaced. Then they're slowly replacing the plant cells with the mineral um, and it just is this long slow process where it's just kind of um, lines the plant cells and then and then another layer grows and lines the plant cells until finally the entire structure has been replaced by minerals. Now, this is a process called permineralization and once that has occurred we can safely say that the, the fossil has in fact been petrified or turned to stone. Okay, so depending on which minerals are replacing the cells, uh, it has a big impact on what color the petrified wood shows up as. So here's a little list of the various kinds of uh, minerals and what kind of colors they make. Carbon, of course, makes black. Chromium, cobalt, and copper makes bluish green or greenish blue. Iron oxides make red and brown and yellow. Uh, 
manganese is pink and orange, manganese oxides are blackish and yellow, and finally silicon dioxide is clear, white, or gray. So you have a rainbow of colors because of all of those different kinds of minerals. I learned, I learned recently that the process can actually be accomplished artificially in less than a week using a few days of soaking in a silica solution and two hours in an argon-filled furnace at 1400 degrees centigrade. Um, they did this at the Pacific Northwest National Laboratory. Uh, but you know, nature requires a lot more time to make petrified wood. Some wood petrifies really relatively quickly, but most of the time it takes millions of years for the mineral to completely replace the cell structure. Where do we find petrified wood? All over the world. As a matter of fact, petrified wood can be found on every continent except Antarctica. And who knows, maybe it's under the ice there, we just don't know. In Africa, you can find petrified wood in Egypt, Libya, Madagascar, New Namibia, and the Sudan. In Asia, China, India, Indonesia, Israel, Pakistan, Saudi Arabia, and Thailand. Australasia, New Zealand and Australia, Europe, Belgium, the Czech Republic, France, Georgia, Germany, Greece, Italy, the Ukraine, and the UK. In North America, of course, the United States, and Canada. In South America, Argentina, Brazil, and Ecuador. And Brazil, as we mentioned earlier, has those very, very old petrified forests. Okay, so we've had a picture of how old it is, how we figured that out, um, and what it is, and how it's formed. So now the big question, what could I do with it? Well, I've got good news for you. Petrified wood is a very hard material. It's usually six and a half to seven on the Mohs hardness scale. Uh, just for comparison, an agate is between seven and seven and a half. And so that's pretty hard. And that means that it polishes really well. Um, and because of its beauty and durability, petrified wood has been used for, for centuries by people from all over the world. Um, in the fossil forests of Arizona, 15,000 to 8,000 years ago, archaeologists have found fossil points of, of spear points uh, and arrows and other stone tools made from petrified wood, which I think is super cool because think how beautiful they must be. In ancient Egypt, which is two to 3,000 BCE, craftsmen made uh, small figurines and other little tools from agatized wood along with many other stones. So the early settlers in the United States also recognized the beauty and utility of petrified wood. Um, it was lying around everywhere. It was so common that they used it as a building material. The, they, they constructed buildings and houses from it. There was a, a car dealer in Lamar, Colorado, who actually covered his building in slabs of petrified wood. Um, he became kind of a kind of a tourist attraction, which you know was a pretty good move on his part. Um, in some parts of the world, petrified wood is still treated as a building material. It's used to make beautiful countertops, tables, sinks, basins, just all kinds of things that are that can be made from stone are made from petrified wood. In the United States, petrified wood is now used mostly for jewelry making. Around World War II, when turquoise was growing scarce, the Navajo people discovered that they could use petrified wood instead and combine it with their, their silver making to make these beautiful pieces of Navajo jewelry. And so that has continued to this day. So rock hounds love petrified wood for a variety of reasons. It's abundant, so it's easily found in lots of places. It's easy to identify and it tells a story. I know for me, um, when I pick up a, a piece of petrified wood and I hold it in my hand, and I think, this used to be a tree. A tree for crying out loud. And finally, whether cut into a cab or a slab or just polished as it is, petrified wood is a really, really beautiful, beautiful stone. So, the next time you see a piece of petrified wood, remember the long, 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 journey it took to get to you and and uh, take a little bit of that knowledge with you. I hope you learned a little bit more today about petrified wood. I know I did. I'm Kate from Katie Did.
keep on doing.